Now, I'm the famous one here. <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm Daniel like, Backroyd. Go on. And I'm the other one. <laughs> You're the other one. Daniel um, is very clever at running theatres. And he used to run a theatre in Colchester, mm -hmm. and now he runs the Northcote in Exeter. And he saw a little play that we did a rough sort of introduction to, and he was number one at Colchester. And when he got to Exeter, I was delighted. He said to me, may I do your play again? And I was thrilled, because I thought it had been forgotten about. Well, Pick that, it up from there. Well, that's very kind of you because it's a fantastic script. It's um, oh, it is. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> breathtakingly good. Um, and mostly thanks to Georges Fado. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what what John did, and I'll ask you about this in a minute. What John did is um, uh, is is unearth pretty much this this uh, extraordinary farce called Monsieur Chasse. And uh, by Georges Fado, written uh, towards the end of the 19th century. Sort of 1895, 1890, we think. Um, and uh, for some reason or other, uh, decided uh, it, would be a, it would be a wheeze to do a new version of this, and has really kind of shaken it, uh, but come up with something that's got all of the, all of the fun of this, of this um, amazing French farce, uh, by the master of French farce, Georges Fado, but with all of the... All of the Wit and wisdom and lunacy that you bring to yes, your, but, to your but comedy. it's not so much the lunacy. I mean, what I love about uh, farce, it's a little bit lunatic anyway. You yeah, know what I mean? The true. emotion gets built right up yeah. because people are terrified that somebody's going to discover something, yeah, yeah. and so they try and hide it up. And yeah. because they're so stressed. They make more mistakes and make it worse. Yeah. It's all that kind of thing, and it and it builds up and builds up and builds, builds up. up and builds up. Some of my some of my I and mean, we we've been talking about your experiences of fast. I mean, my, some of my happiest moments in the theatre have been being surrounded by an audience watching a fast because you, the gales of laughter, the gales of laughter, um, it really makes you feel that life is worth living when it, you laugh. Like yeah, that. I, why is that? Because I, why? why? Well, because it's terribly good for us when we laugh. That's very true. And, you know, I don't think there's a great deal on the television at the moment that is really funny. A lot of it's clever and interesting, but a lot of older people say to me, there's nothing that makes me laugh the way that Fools and Horses did, yeah, or yeah. Steptoe, or Hancock, mm, or some of these mm. things, or Forty Toe. Yeah, no, it's true, it's true. Well, it's got all of that, so that's why... And I, so I was... So when, so when I asked John... Uh, can we? Can I? Can I direct your play? Can we do it? Can we? Can we do the next step of that journey? Because that's the thing about yeah. comedy. Comedy is it, is it grows as you as you put it in front of an audience and discover what works and, and hone it. Well, the audiences of comedy, you, they're going to laugh, so they mm. become part of the show, and mm. you have to figure out. Yeah. You know, would, is there a big laugh here or a small laugh? Until you mm. figure that out, you don't know how to play it. So it's really exciting to be to be doing that next step in Exeter, yeah. uh, the North Cot, and then we're going off on tour with it. It's it's well, it's, right. it's going I'm off. I'm coming off. down to interfere with certain stages, but I don't want to come in and say don't do this or do that. I'm going to come in and say I think we can make this bit better, but I'm not sure how. It's been it's been great to discover how collaborative you are. You know, in your in your I approach. I really you believe really, this. I mean, yeah. if you watch Forty Towers, it wasn't me telling people what to do. It was all of us and Andrew suddenly saying, "You know something? I don't think that line is right." And Prue would say, well, shouldn't he do something about that? And Connie mm. would say, oh, that's funny. And if you work like that, everyone gets involved and it releases a lot of energy. Well, it's, it's much, And it's fun. And it's fun. And it's fun. And if it's fun for the people who are making the show, nine times out yeah. of ten, you're halfway towards <laughs> communicating that to an audience. So what, So t just t t tell us, why, why did you just suddenly decide at, at, at your tender age to, to, to make it your, day, your stage writing. I've day, been yeah. talking about finding a classic Fado farce uh, since the middle 80s. Okay. And every now and again I've read one, and it's either one that everybody knows, mm. and I wanted to stay away from that, or else it's one that isn't so well known for the perfectly good reason that it isn't as good as the others. Okay. And I found this one, I didn't even like the first act, but when I read the second act I thought, wait a moment, and I read the third act and I thought, this is a gem, I just have to completely rewrite the first act. Mm. 
And the embarrassing thing is that one person thinks the first tax is better than the other. <laughs> and I know it isn't, <laughs> because I went to it because of the yeah. second and third act. OK, brilliant. Well, it's, it, it's, it's fantastic. And, and uh, you, you told me that some of your early experiences of seeing farce were in regional theatre, weren't they? Yes. Well, did, in, West, in Western Supermare? Uh, Was it or you, elsewhere? Oh, no, you you, oh, it, well, you in won't believe this, but uh, yes, I saw uh, Servant of Two Masters in Western Supermare right. before it became the two governors. Uh, right. um, and then, as I think, when I first got to London, I started seeing Fado's farces being done, Flea in her ear, mm. Girl from Maxim's, uh, The Turkey, yeah. Paradise, Paradise Hotel, yeah, yeah. Hotel Paradiso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these were the best evenings I had in the theatre yeah. because you had these great actors, Finney, people like that, playing comedy superbly well yeah it's fantastic well and i think I, i'm so i'm i'm really i'm really chuffed and grateful that you that you're kind of getting involved in in starting something like this off in the regional theatre like exeter because because you know well, that's obviously as you say that's, that's well, what I, that's what i do and it's yeah, it, and i like that i think you know one of my great friends is richard air Mm. And you know he had a time at Nottingham he did. when he worked with he was doing was so good it was influencing the West End before he got there. Mm. You know. It's fantastic, and and something that's uh, we haven't really talked about, but something that's kind of important for us in Exeter is the fact that having having uh, you know making a show like Bang Bang at the North Cole before it goes off on tour gives us a chance to bring some fantastic artists to Exeter, and while they're in Exeter, they can share their skills yes. and experience with, yes. the, with the young artists That's that, right. that we that we know that we're. There's developing. something about walking into a theatre that I still find in a deep way touching. The sense that shows have been going on mm. in that theatre for ages, and its connection with the community, and people come there because yeah. they, and they get to know something about the theatre. And there's so little of that communal stuff these days that I think that when you're in a theatre, you have an experience you don't have anywhere else. Really good. Really yeah. good. Well, we're going to have a fantastic time, and, uh, and uh, uh, it's going to be great to have you down in Exeter um, uh, helping us in rehearsals, like you say. Pleasure. Yeah, nice to Sorry, see you. What was the name again? <laughs> cheeky Bugger. <laughs> oh, Mr. Cheeky Bugger. Oh.